Mr. Henry Spades Killian was born on September 5, 1955, at the Good Samaritan Hospital. He had many brothers and sisters growing up, and his sister Nancy was another Air Force veteran. Before he entered the service, Killian worked at a shoe company in Richland, making boxes for packaging, and then later at a yarn factory in Wilmersdorf. He went straight into the service after high school, eventually achieving the rank of Master Sergeant before retirement. He enlisted and was not drafted, as the year he entered, there was no draft. He entered with a six-year enlistment plan and had a guaranteed job. Killian began his basic training September 12, 1973 at Lackland Air Force Base in San Antonio, Texas. Mr. Killian recalls that although military life was and is much different from civilian life, he had very little trouble transitioning from one to the other. However, he did mention that the military life is a lot more regimented, more disciplined, more uh, you have to do what they tell you to do versus you can in civilian life, you can say, I'm not going to do this. I'm just I'm just not going to do it. I'm just going to walk away from it. You can't do that in the military because you signed a contract saying you would cooperate and you will uh obey the orders of the superiors over you. Killian was later sent to another base called Keesler Air Force Base in Biloxi, Mississippi. It was at Keesler that he began training for a job that would last him his entire military career, radar. From around February of 1975 to May of the same year, he was taught how to operate the plan position indicator and how to interpret the icon shown on the screen to be able to detect objects. They, they taught you how to operate the radar, what they call PPI, plan position indicator, which is basically a display where you look at a, uh, like a picture tube, a TV tube, and you make sense out of the different icons on the picture tube. What are they? What they represent? Having been guaranteed both a job as an air control and warning operator and having completed basic training, Killian was sent off to the Philippines at the beginning of the Vietnam conflict. Unlike his guaranteed job, Killian had no choice at this point of where he would be stationed. However, he mentioned that the moving process was mostly quick and painless as a payoff. When I was single, it was very easy. You put everything in a, in a suitcase and you just picked yourself up and went. As I, as I gained a family and kids and everything, it would take uh, a whole month to do the whole process. From the time you got notified, you got uh, your orders to go, you packed up all your household goods, all the kids' toys, everything, all the clothing, the furniture. They moved it. You got to the new duty location. Everything got unpacked, all the boxes, cleaning up all the boxes. It took about a month. Vietnam era and even beyond that, Killian was a radar operator. His primary job was to monitor air flight equipment and to make quick fire decisions on the fly. One of the most stressful parts of his career was having to handle in-flight emergencies. The when I later in my career when you're to, when you're controlling airplanes, uh, they have what they call an in-flight emergency. Uh, an aircraft something goes wrong with it, it's got to land now. It can't land in ten seconds. It's got to go now because of an, uh, uh, some kind of aircraft malfunction. You do everything you possibly can to get them a clearance into where they need to go. And the whole thing happens in 15 seconds. And it's a lot of pressure. And you got to do it right the first time. He, in all of his career, did this successfully and without losing a single person. In-flight emergencies were part of what was known as feast and famine. The field of radar was like a roller coaster. For a period, there could be little to no work available with operators bored out of their skulls. In an instant, that could change to people running around in a frenzy trying to get their work done without interfering with other people's jobs. Working during famine was akin to hanging wallpaper with a single hand. Difficult with a person's attention spread thin with a million other things to worry about. Worrying and stress were part of the job, but one would simply learn how to deal with the pressure, and if one failed to do so, they were transferred to another program. At the time, Killian had many hobbies to help him deal with the pressures around him. He could... By the time of my end of my 20s, I could play every card game known to man. ...and learned how to build computers. Writing home, a commonplace now, was not one of Mr. Killian's hobbies, however. With the area he was stationed in, and with the lack of technology available to him, writing home was not possible. The occasional analog letter was able to reach his states, but beyond that, his family was left mostly in the dark about Killian's whereabouts. We didn't have uh, emails, we didn't have Facebook, we didn't have all those conveniences we have today. Uh, I mean, I wrote letters home every once in a while, but no, it was very, it, was, it, was, it wasn't as easy as it is today when you go somewhere and I can text somebody and no matter where they're at or where I'm at, they can get the message instantaneously. We didn't have that kind of thing back then. 
So it was just writing the old analog letters. Even returning home, it was not as warm for a welcome as one would expect. The Vietnam conflict was not a popular war with the people of America by any stretch of the imagination. His family welcomed him back, and life resumed as it was before. No grandos party and no welcoming committee. You have somebody coming back from Afghanistan and Iraq. Everybody uh, goes to the airport and meets you and things like that. You have to understand the Vietnam War conflict was not a very popular conflict. A lot of, there was a lot of rioting in the country over it. Uh, a lot of it was very unpopular. Uh, it was just something where you did your job and came home. Versus today, because of the, the climate, where the American people look at the military today, when the when the guys come back from Afghanistan, Iraq, they're they're cheered, they're uh, given parties, welcome home, and uh, that's just the time of the t you know something happened during those times. Regardless. Killian states himself a much different person than if he never entered the service. He believes he is much more disciplined as a whole and very knowledgeable about his chosen field, i.e. weather, machinery, and airplanes. Because of the way the military operates, it makes you more responsible because if you're not responsible, they, they, will, they will deny you re-enlistment or they will even kick you out. And you can be very irresponsible as a civilian in some jobs, and your, and your employer doesn't even care as long as you come to work, as long as you're responsible in the job. But if you're, if you're irresponsible off the job, the civilian employer doesn't really care, versus the military cares about that a lot. It's called the whole person concept. He also states himself as being a responsible person thanks to his time in the service, and that if he had to go back, he would not change a thing. Even with only being in the actual Air Force for a total of 21 years, he remains a radar operator and worked with the U.S. Customs Service 21 years later for a grand total of 42 years of working with radar and its applications. He even stays in contact with his friends from the service through Facebook, a luxury he could only dream of during Vietnam. Currently, Killian lives in California with his wife, Mary, and is a father of many. To this day, he is a radar operator and would not have it any other way.